This is Mr. Anderson from Math 121. We're going to be looking at uh, the first video of our Chapter 7 prep test. Um, please practice this on a separate sheet of paper uh, and make sure you get the answers um, from here or from your notes. The first question set of questions says, write an equivalent expression using radical notation and if possible, simplify it. So in problem number one, let me get my pen turned on here. Problem number one, the answer is the cubic root of x to the first power because the top number here is going to be the inside power of whatever the whatever the um, variable is and the outside is going to be the index of the radical so uh, case in point here this would be the fourth root of 81 shouldn't look like a 9 there the fourth root of 81 and um, if you try that on your calculator or take a look at a root chart, um, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81, so the fourth root of 81 is uh, 3. Now, um, because this is an even root, we do have to think about the possibility of there being positive or negative values. So that's something to think about because negative 3 to the fourth power is also 81. So please make sure when you check your... Um, check your roots um, that if it is an even numbered root you'd have two possibilities right there plus or minus odd roots wouldn't have this characteristic but even roots do so in this case this is going to be the um, square root of 9 to the fifth power and it's probably best to have a calculator for this problem here so if you type in 9 to the fifth power on your calculator you get an, a very very big answer 50,000 I believe it's 50,049 I just checked that and that's correct. So 50,049 or 59,049. Sorry about that. And then what you'll do is take the square root of this and the square root of this is 243. But again, be careful when you take the square root of 59,049, you're going to get not just 243 but positive or negative 243 unless you see a disclaimer in the problems that all um, all uh, problems could be um, raised you know only raised you know with positive numbers you do have to include any time with an even root uh, like a square root fourth root sixth root the possibility of two answers now what we're going to do here in problems four through six is we're going to turn these into um, exponential notation so we're going to turn it instead of like in the previous problem turn it into radical notation we're going to turn this into exponential notation so this is the square root there so the 22 to the first power um, makes 22 to the one half power right there and that's is equivalent to what I've written up above there um, now is this going to be x to the four fifths or x to the five fourths um, it's going to be x raised to the four fifths power so the inside uh, divided by out. Now here we have a couple different uh, steps here. This is going to be x to the 4 sixths, that's inside out. This is y to the 1 sixth, and this is z to the 7 sixths. Now we're going to do some simplification because 4 sixths is, can be reducible to 2 thirds. The 1 sixth stays 1 sixth, and the 1 and 1 sixth means we have 1 z and 1 sixth now the reason why I didn't write it as 1 and 1 sixth is because when you have two variables next to each other you just add the exponents and z to the first power and z to the 1 sixth power is the same thing as z to the 7 sixth power because 1 is technically 6 sixths to get to 7 sixths so that's why this answer is written the way it is it's a little weird but it's technically simplified all right, so moving on here, um, we're going to assume that variables could represent any real number, so that means we have to do be careful about our plus minus here. So in this case, the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of x squared is x. But since variables can represent any number, we're going to have to go plus or minus for each of these problems, since they are, in fact, square roots. Um, we can sim the, the square root of 350 is not simplifiable, but um, 25 will divide 350 perfect and this is where I had my students make a root chart and see if there's anything that would divide evenly into 350 in this case it is 25 now 350 divided by 25 gives you 14 so this makes 5 square roots of 14 and since 
we have taken a square root, we do have to consider the plus or minus of those problems. Now inside here, this is uh, actually factorable. This is x plus 2, x plus 2. Uh, if you foiled this out, you would get this trinomial uh, underneath the radical sign. And I can rewrite this as x plus 2 quantity squared. But when I take the square root of something that's quantity squared, I just get itself x plus 2. But since these are all square roots, and any of uh, all of these we can assume they are they could represent any number, then we do have to consider the plus or minus of it all. And finally, kind of getting you know closer to the end of that first section there, we took a look at domains. Now, when we have an even power, or an even, sorry, if we have an even index, 2, 4, 6, 8, so on and so forth, then our domains for any even index has to be greater than or equal to 0, whereas if you have any odd index, that means 3, 5, 7, 9, etc., then you have all real possibilities. And the reason for that is because three negatives make a negative, and three positives make a positive. But in this situation, you can never take two things and make a negative, because two negatives make a positive and two positives make a positive. So our process, if we see a, a, an odd degree, we're just going to say, sure, the domain is all real, because we have no problems with that. But when we have an even index, we take just what's inside of the equation, just inside of that radical. Don't worry about this on the outside or anything else. Just take what's inside the equation, this piece right there, and you're going to set that greater than or equal to 0. Now let's uh, solve for x. So to find for the domain, or what values of x would make the statement true, we get the x all by itself here, so negative 7x is greater than or equal to negative 5. Then we divide by negative 7, so x, and then we divide these two, which is going to make a positive 5 sevenths. Um, notice that we flip the symbol. And we flip the symbol because we are going to have um, divide, division of a negative here. So my set notation is going to be x, um, so that x is going to be less than or equal to negative 5 sevenths. If that's the case, if I put any number that's smaller than this, I'm going to get a uh, non negative number underneath the radical and I won't violate the domain restrictions. Now what I'm going to do here in the next um, nine problems is I'm going to um, assume no radicals were formed by raising negative quantities to even powers, which is great. So I can now think of the square root of 100 as 10 and not have to think of plus or minus 10. But what I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to have to simplify. Now it helps to have a root chart uh, around for you so you can check to see is uh, 27 uh, perfectly cube rootable? And the answer is yes. You can do this on a calculator or you can just check to see like 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. But since this is a negative 27 then this is going to break down to be a negative 3 because negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is 27. And then the technique we use for the variables is we ask, how many times does the index go into the power? And 3 goes into 4 one time, so this gives me x to the first power. Then we have one x left over, so we're going to keep that x locked up inside of the radical there. So again, 3 went into 4 one time with one left over. And there's your answer for problem number 12. You will see this pattern um, in problem 13 really exemplified because 3 goes into 6 twice, so that gives me x squared. 3 goes into 7 twice, which gives me y squared, but with one y left over, so let me go put that y into the cubic root like so, and 3 goes into z, or of 13, four times. So this is z to the fourth power, and that leaves me with just one z left over to get me to 13. And so this is the answer for problem number 13. Problem numbers 14 and 15 are a little tricky, um, especially because you may not be sure how to do this. Um, one possibility is to write this 15 times, but the faster way to do it is to turn this x, y to the power of 1 third, raised to the power of 15. Now because of our uh, power to power rule, we would take these two exponents and we would multiply them together. So 1 third times 15 over 1 is the same thing as 15 divided by 3 or 5. So this becomes xy raised to the fifth power. As an alternative answer, you can write that as x to the fifth, y to the fifth, um, but these are equivalent answers.
Number 15, it's going to probably take a little bit of learning here, but you're going to put the first one into its um, fractional exponent, and then the fifth root is also going to go to a fractional exponent. And like the two in problem number 14, we're going to multiply these two fractions together. So 5x is 1 times 1 is 1, and 3 times 5 is 15. So this is 5x raised to the 1 15th power, or the 15th root of 5x. And again, these are equivalent answers, the one on the left and the one on the right, so you can feel pretty confident that that's going to be you know, it. In problem number 16, 5 does not go into 4 at all, so that x to the 4th power stays inside the radical of oh, the 5th root of that. It stays inside the 5th root there. Now, 5 goes into 5 once, so here's my y. And 5 goes into 6 once, leaving 1 behind. So there's my answer for number 16. Now, the square root of 128 isn't actually um, possible. It's a decimal. But is there a big square root that can actually, can we break this down into maybe a, a rootable number here and uh, a leftover number here? And the answer is yes, but don't pick 4 or 16. Pick the biggest number possible, which is 64, because that's going to always leave you with a number that couldn't further be broken down. If you chose 4 or 16, you'll notice you'll have some numbers here that you'd have to still keep working on. So this is going to be 8 square roots of 2. And now what we'll do is kind of uh, work through the variables here and put our 8 square root of 2 with it together. So how many times does 2 go into 7? And the answer is 3 times with 1 left over. How many times does 2 go into y cubed? Well, just 1 with 1 left over. And how many times does 2 go into 10? Well, 5. Now, the way that I've written this is a little different than the problems before, but all I'm going to do is take all of the numbers that escape the radical, or escape the square root, and write those in front. 8, x cubed, y, and z to the fifth. And all these radicals, um, since they're within the same root or index, I can just write them together to x, y. All right, now we're on problem number 18. I'm going to move some things around here on my work desk so I can uh, uh, get this done. And actually, let me move this up higher on the screen. That might make things easier for me. All right, here we go. So what we're going to do for problem number 18 is we're going to uh, continue to see if we can simplify this. Um, now, the way that we're going to do that is we're going to see um, is negative 250 cube rootable? And the answer is no. Um, so we're going to try to break that into a cube rootable number that um, is as big as possible. And and if we think about 5, 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. So let's pull out a negative 125. An Anderson tip is that we should always try to pull out the biggest number possible. And this, in this case, is negative 125, which leaves us with the cubic root of 2, which is impossible to break out. So, then we kind of work on the variables. Uh, three. Well, let me finish this up here. This is negative 5 times the cubic root of 2. Okay, so how many times does 3 go into the cubic root of 2? Uh, or 3 go into 2? And the answer is uh, none. So the uh, x is squared is trapped in there. How many times does 3 go into y to the ninth? And the answer is a perfect uh, 3. How many times does 3 go into z to the 16? And the answer is pretty nice, because it goes in the 5 with 1 left over. So what that means is I'm going to have to move everything that got out of the, um, the cubic root, put those first. So here's negative 5 y cubed, z to the 5th, and everything else gets put inside here. So 3, 2x squared, z. All right, so if we take a look at 19 and 20, um, there's actually nothing you can do with them right now because the square root of 2 is un un unsimplifiable, and also the um, square root of 6 is also unsimplifiable. So what happens here is that we are going to have to try to um, work this, so maybe combine them, and then after we combine them, we can maybe see if they're... Um, you know, simplifiable. So the rule for this is that we, since they're under the same square root, we can totally multiply them, 12. And then we look at our root chart and notice that, wow, 12 is dividable by 4 and 3. 
and the square root of 4 is 2. So 2 square roots of 3 is our answer. Um, same thing goes here. Like um, 7 is and 3 are not rootable, um, but if I put them together, uh, well, they're still not rootable. But the reason why I want to put them together is because x and x squared is x cubed. So the cubic root of 21 is just the cubic root of 21. But how many times does 3 go into x cubed? And the answer is 1. So there we have our x and our uh, cubic root of 21. All right, and this will end the first video of our review. And uh, again, I strongly recommend that you practice these on separate sheets of paper to get ready for, a, uh, for the Chapter 7 test. Thank you.